you want certain programs or scripts to start automatically when the Raspberry Pi boots up because they should always be running. This is relatively easy. In this video, I show you three ways how this works with Docker and other methods. After starting the Linux kernel, an init system takes over. It starts all other programs up to the login screen and takes care of their life cycle. Even on a freshly installed GNU Linux system such as the Raspberry Pi OS, you have some processes in the background that take care of various tasks that you might not even have on your screen. For example, a DHCL client so that you get an IP address when you are connected to the network. An SSH server for remote access or software that connects to the WLAN network of your choice. There are many more programs on systems with a graphical user interface. Most distributions now use systemd. There are various init systems, but systemd has established itself with many. Debian has also been using it for some time and so has the Raspberry Pi OS. It would therefore be best to create a so-called unit in the init system here systemd in order to start the program at the desired time. It is powerful but also relatively complex, so many people shy away from it. And because of the complexity, we will not look at systemd itself here, but at alternative ways to make it work more easily. If you use ready-made packages like here the well-known web server Nginx which I installed via apt package management, then you should know that you usually don't have to worry about the auto start because they come with a systemd unit to start themselves automatically. Here you can see it in the history there he has created one we can now look at Nginx with system CTL status. This is already active and running that means with curl HTTP localhost we see here the Nginx is running and we can access it that means here you don't have to worry about the auto start at all. The package has already taken care of that for you. But it looks different with manually installed or self-developed programs and scripts. As an example, I have prepared a web server for you here in Python. It's nothing wild. It just delivers a small hello world page. And is intended here as an example of something self-developed. Let's save it. You would normally start it directly for testing here with Python. You can see it's running in the... We can then here test it with curl for example. Also with each browser using HTTP. We are here on the Pi with localhost and port 8080. I have specified it in the script. I get here hello from the Python web server that shows me that he is running and working. But only as long as the console is open. If I close this then my request will fail because it is no longer running. That means we want to put this script in the auto start now as background job. In most cases, containers like Docker are probably the best choice. The Docker daemon is started via systemd and takes care that your containers are started automatically if this is defined by the restart policy. In addition, Docker has many other advantages. The core of the whole thing is that you can isolate a program with all dependencies. There are exceptions, e.g. particularly low resource systems. There it makes sense to do without it. But in most cases, in my opinion, this is the best way if nothing speaks against it. Here on my Raspberry Pi 5, which I use for testing, it is already on Docker with Docker Compose, which means we can get started right away. Otherwise you would have to install it first, Compose is now installed automatically with Docker. To dockerize our little Python script here, i.e. the web server, we first create a Docker file. You will see that this is not so difficult. I have already prepared this and insert it here. Firstly, we get a small Python 3 Alpine image. Say here in, app we want to store our data there we copy this web server.py that we have just created into it. Environment variable python unbuffered this is an instruction for python and ensures that we can directly see log messages from the web server that it has started, for example. And otherwise it's just followed by the python command with the script and that's it. We save that and we can continue with it. To the second file we need, namely the docker compose. YAML or YML. Here, too, we only need a few lines. On the one hand, let's say services, we have this Python web container that should execute build in the current folder, like execute the Docker file we have just created. Very important now is the restart policy that should always be started, i.e., whenever the Pi starts. 
and the port share on 8080 so that it is also accessible because we have a web server here. So now we only have a total of three files. Once the Python script the web server what we want to start. Then the Docker file that creates us with our instructions a suitable image as the basis of the image and our Docker compose that starts a container based on that. We can now start the whole thing with Docker compose up D with the D for detach that mean it runs in the background. This just takes a while because then the image has to load first. I have already prepared this and now look once with docker compose ps. It runs in the background we see with the port mappings and we can go with curl to localhost 8080. There our python web server says hello. And we just restart now to see what happens afterwards. The restart is done and we can do docker ps here. Our demo web server Python has been running for 54 seconds because we have just restarted the whole Pi and are doing another test with curl or the browser here. Localhost 8080 this runs in the background without us having started it manually now. But there are also a few scenarios where Docker is not necessarily the best choice. As already mentioned, for example, low resources, but it may also be that you are an absolute beginner and want to keep the whole thing as simple as possible. Then there are various alternatives, for example via crontab. Cron is responsible on Linux systems for starting programs at certain times. This goes down to the minutes. I could also say I want to run a program every night at 2 o'clock for backups or similar or cleanup work. If you are still a Windows user, you can imagine how the task management works in a similar way. You can edit the cron jobs with crontab-e for edit. It is important to know that crontab always refers to the current user, so here you labs. If you need root rights you have to edit the whole thing with sudo. The normal user without root rights is enough for me here. Then I get a little help here on how it basically works. These are all comments with the hash and below them are the respective cron jobs. The standard empty syntax is perhaps a bit cryptic for beginners. Less well known is that you can also use the whole thing with such nicknames, you first define when it should run. Even less known is that the nicknames also have an at reboot. This executes programs not only on reboot but generally when the Raspberry Pi is started. In contrast to the time controlled tasks, this only happens once, when the Pi starts and then cron is loaded. It executes all programs with at reboot and then this does not happen again until the next start. After specifying the time window, in this case reboot, the command follows. Important, you do not have dollar path here. This means you have to specify all binary files with the complete path. For Python, for example, this is usr bin python. And now follows the script. This is located in home ulabs demo web server and is called webserver.py. Important. If this runs in the background, it makes sense to put an ampersand after it. Otherwise, if this just executes something once and is then terminated, you don't need this. Now the whole thing has to be saved. You see, this is the text editor that is selected in the standard with select editor. Here is the nano if you have not selected any other. That means here I can now save the whole thing with control X confirm with Y for yes. The file name is so temporary that it fits. It writes it directly into the cron tab. Enter and the cron tab is activated. We also restart here. The pi is back. This means curl http localhost 8080 now also says hello from the python web server. And with ps we can also search for the python processes here. Oops, if you write it correctly then it also works. This is our script. If you have installed the desktop environment of the Raspberry Pi OS then you can also use the xdg auto start specification as variant 3. For this you create a desktop file and this is then loaded by the desktop environment at startup. This is especially interesting for graphical programs. We will do this here. First we have to open the console and create the folder. Config auto start with mkdir in the home directory. This is a hidden folder and now create a desktop file in this folder with a text editor of your choice like vim or nano. The name is freely selectable. I will call it browser desktop here now follows in square brackets because it's a any like syntax desktop entry is the group type equals application name is again freely selectable 
I take Start Browser because I want to launch Firefox with my website as a demo. The exec line now is getting interesting because here comes the command you want to start. I want to launch Firefox so I add USR bin Firefox with HTTPS colon slash slash u dash labs dot de as argument and at least setting terminal to false. That's all and we can save the file now, which needs to be done with WQ in the Vim editor I've used. To test let's do a restart of the Raspberry Pi and we'll see. As soon as it boots up again, a Firefox browser is started on the desktop. By the way, I'm on Raspberry Pi OS 12. Before that, only Google Chromium was possible. And you see, the browser is started with my address. So you can also use something like that for kiosk mode. If you say I want to start some things automatically in full screen mode and then have it automatically in my auto start with just a few lines. Theoretically there is a fourth way and that is via the we have to open it with sudo vim, etc, rc, local file. This is a batch script. It is executed when booting that only has to return exit 0. That means we can now also start our script here. usr, bin, python followed by the path to my script with an in character. Then this is also started here when booting. Why do I say theoretically? The file here has been outdated for decades and is basically only available via compatibility layer. Namely via the if we look at system ctl status rc local now. This is a unit that has been built in here as a compatibility layer. This is not cross-platform compatible. It is still in Raspberry Pi OS, for example. But it has already been removed from AND distribution. That means it does not exist there and is not executed. That's why I would advise against it. I recommend the first three methods in this example, either Docker, cron with crontab, or via the desktop files. If you don't want to use that, you can use systemd. You have full control and can define even more details. Including dependencies, for example. This is a bit more complex. But you can take a look at how such a unit is structured here with systemctl cat rc local service, for example. This starts this rc local script via systemd as a workaround. You can use this as a basis for writing your own systemd services. But this will be more extensive and is therefore no longer part of this video. I hope you enjoyed it if you want to have more information about Linux, Raspberry Pi and other topics from it and technology have a look at the edge or on my channel. I wish you much success with your projects, see you next time.